Kara, I'm reminded of when Snap came to market, mm -hmm. and we had a lot of conversations about how Evan uh, sort of zigged when others were zagging, and the question back then was, yeah. would it work? Uh, obviously not. Well, you know, it was interesting. This, a lot of this stuff was well known that this design didn't work, and it was definitely he's he's definitely a, a CEO that controls the company completely. And while he has some partners there and people he works with, they, they've had a real um, a lot of people leaving, coming and going, and stuff like that. So he kind of runs the company by himself, which a lot of these CEOs do. I mean, it's interesting um, what's hap what's happened at these companies if these people are experienced enough to do what they need to do without a lot of help. And uh, even though initially the stuff they created was amazing. Well, Walt, maybe, I mean, was it his own management style and model, or was it the fact that Facebook came in and arguably stole their lunch money? Well, I think both, but I would like to focus on what you just said a moment, uh, uh, the latter part, Carl, and I'd love to hear Kara's thoughts too, because we've talked about this a lot. I think you can lay a lot of the blame on a bad redesign. That Wall Street Journal piece is great. I know I dropped off of Snap when the design was so bad. However, part of it is that a company like a Facebook has been able to buy up Instagram, buy up WhatsApp, and incorporate things, and just really dominate the space and use its dominance in social media to hurt competitors. This is something we used to push back on for the past hundred years in this uh, country ever since we had antitrust, you didn't want some uh, service to become so big that it could leverage dominance to hurt competitors and crush them. So whether it's 40 percent of the problem or 60 percent of the problem, I think we have to look at the lack of antitrust enforcement and pushbacks on these large companies, especially Facebook, Amazon, and Google. Kara, why don't you address that? I, I think Walt mm -hmm. was part, uh, partly addressing that to you. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's, well, here's the thing. I mean, look, Facebook copied, Instagram copied a lot of Snap's best features and continues to do so. I mean, and that's what it does. And I've had, I've done interviews with Kevin Systrom, who was running at a time, saying, you know, we just made a better version of what they were doing and wasn't apologetic about it. I think one of the issues was this redesign. I have teenagers, and I know they reacted badly to the Snap redesign. I mean, it was really interesting how badly, um, because these were people who loved the product. And so I think at the heart, that's really one of the issues, because I don't think people, I don't think, say, teenagers rush to do work on Facebook. They do like to, to use Facebook. They do like Instagram. They do like uh, some of the other uh, stuff that Facebook makes. But in general, it was, uh, it was Evans to lose here even at the same time that they were dealing with copying that was going on by bigger companies. Um, so I think it's a two-pronged thing that happened both at the same time. And I, don't, I, I, do, I do think people have to wonder about how much these big companies come in and steal ideas and then replicate them and replicate them well. And that, that is an issue. I'm not sure how you then do something from a regulatory point of view to stop it. Kara, you know, uh, to you Carl, first, what I about the in? idea that... Yeah, please do, Walter. Forgive me. Go ahead. I just want to say that over the years, whether it was the AT&T or the Microsoft uh, type antitrust or IBM, we resisted letting companies leverage things become too big and smash competition. And this led to the digital age explosion of innovation. So I think we have to look at this period in which we do have, as Kim Wu has written about this in his book, The Curse of Bigness, we do have to say, let's get back to a place where competition can thrive, because I think Facebook is getting hurt, not just by shooting itself in the foot every week, but by not having competition that keeps it in line. Yeah. Kara, you know, we're, we're ending the year. Mm -hmm. These stocks have gotten hit pretty hard. What about the notion that, that these CEOs, Spiegel, Zuckerberg, Dorsey, we show, you know, a, as well, have mm -hmm. eroded the confidence of, of their shareholders, not just their users, but, but their shareholders. Spiegel described in this article as impulsive and aloof. Zuckerberg seemingly mm -hmm. unable to get a handle on the problem that exists at that company. Dorsey, wh whether he's really willing to take on the trolls, on the troll pool, if you want to mm -hmm. call it that, that Twitter in, in, in many ways has become. How do we assess that? Well, you know, these guys all had this period where they were seen as geniuses. And so they were sort of Steve Jobs before they went through the bad part, right? And this is the bad part. And so the question is, can they really manage these companies? You know, in the case of Facebook, it's so massive, the management challenge. That's a really different thing than Twitter or Snapchat. These are just what's going on at Twitter and, uh, Twitter and Snapchat are basic block and tackle management issues that they need to 
get better at. Facebook is a much bigger problem because it's such a massive company. And the question is, you know, I think n none of them really had management training, but they were all founders that wanted to keep control of, of their companies. And that's a very typical founding kind of mentality. It's just a question of in this complex world, if that's enough or if more uh, of these, these particular leaders need more help going forward.